Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to do our flight testing on the GDU Bird. To see the unboxing and setup, check out our previous video. And to keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. So before we go flying, the first step is to calibrate the compass on board the aircraft. To begin with, remove any metal items from your person and stand clear of any metal objects in the environment. Turn on the radio and then the aircraft. Now the aircraft will only enter compass calibration mode if it's sitting on its back, which is a little unusual, but on the plus side you get a clear view of the lights. To enter compass calibration mode, flip the mode switch on the shoulder of the radio back and forth several times. This is really old school DJI stuff here. When the lights on the rear limbs begin blinking yellow, that tells you you've entered compass calibration mode. Pick up the aircraft and rotate it in a clockwise direction. When the lights on the rear limbs start blinking green, you need to rotate the aircraft nose down and then continue rotating in a clockwise direction. When the lights on the forward limbs are steady green and the rear limbs are steady yellow, compass calibration is complete and we can go flying. To start the motors, you pull the sticks down and in. To stop the motors, you pull the left stick down and out. So before you go flying, you may want to manually straighten out the folding propellers. You can start the motors with the propellers folded, but you're likely to encounter massive vibration, like this. So as you can see there, those vibrations can be violent enough to actually pull these limbs out of alignment. So be careful with that. So I've got my iPad hooked up on the radio here with FPV and telemetry. Let's take her up, see how she flies. All right, so no doubt about it, this is definitely a camera ship. She's extremely slow and steady, and frankly, that's what you want for a camera ship. Real steady, real confident in the air, I'd say. I like it. There's a fair amount more latency here in the field than we saw in the demonstration we did in the studio, which you can see in our previous video. So I assume that has something to do with the range. Okay, now here I'm gonna do a vertical ascent for you. And check it out, I think this thing ascends and descends more aggressively than any of its other axes of movement. It can really move up and down. I punched it up and I hit 400 feet before I even realized it. So this thing goes up in a hurry, so stay aware of that. It does have GPS fencing at 400 feet, it'll cut you off before you cross that line. But uh, still, it really climbs quickly, which could make for some interesting camera shots. And one more thing is the suite of sensors on the belly of the aircraft, the ultrasonic and the optical flow, the position hold is excellent. I mean, just look at it hovering right there. That's no input for me. So that's a pretty good mark for it too. Now we're gonna test the camera. So on the shoulders of the radio, we have buttons to start and stop recording video, as well as to capture still photos. And we've got these two dials which control camera pitch, as well as camera yaw. And I'm still not clear why we control camera yaw independently on an aircraft with a fixed undercarriage. I did note, however, that the yaw stops about where the undercarriage comes into view. All right, so now I'm gonna punch it, take it dramatically into the vertical, so you can see the kind of shots you can get with that rapid ascent. That's pretty nice. So I'm flying around here in the park, just giving you some views, the video coming down off the aircraft. Again, this is a 4K capable camera, but I'm recording in 1080p right now. One interesting thing about the bird is that it comes with this little payload delivery system, which clips on the bottom, and you can use this button by default on the back of the radio to release it. I'm the first to admit, when I first heard about this, it seems kind of gimmicky, but more and more I'm hearing chatter in the industry about how on the job site, they're looking for drones to say carry tools around, or if you got some guy who's 10 stories up doing some riveting, but he runs out of rivets, something like this might actually be useful. <laughs> Next up is our gimbal torture test. On the left-hand side of the screen, you see the video coming off the aircraft. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you see how the aircraft's maneuvering. So you can decide for yourself how good a job the gimbal's doing.
Here's our time-lapse flight endurance test for the bird. It's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is cold enough to have an effect on battery performance. So keep that in mind when you're evaluating these results. Also, it's important to know that if the battery drops to 20%, the aircraft will immediately ascend and initiate return to home, which is what happens to me at the end of this test. So that was our flight testing of the GDU Bird. To see the unboxing and the setup, be sure to watch our previous video. And to keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. Well, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Fly safe.